Good evening, folks. Welcome once again on this Friday evening. I was uh, spent the day uh, just getting things ready and then having a birthday party for my little girl, Everly, who is now the double digits. 10 years old. Hard to believe she's 10 already. Seems like just yesterday I was bringing her home from the hospital. But today as I watched her and her friends and her brothers and sisters playing outside on the slip and slide and smiling and laughing, uh, you know, the thought came into my mind and the text came into my mind, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundant and free. And I thought to myself, isn't it wonderful that the God that we serve promises us eternal life but he also promises if we live by heaven's principles, if, if we live with heaven in our hearts and on our minds already, we can enjoy a little piece of heaven even here, even now during this difficult time. So I thank the Lord for that little snapshot as a father watching my daughter play. And I thought, how much more does he enjoy seeing his children happy and how much is he longing to come and take us home to heaven? Uh, this evening, I want to talk just a little bit and read a little bit about having heaven in our hearts and minds right now. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, I thank you uh, for that little snapshot I could see today of the joy of children playing and laughing. And, and Lord, I thank you for the gift of life and another year of life for my daughter, Lord. And I also pray uh, that you would continue to lead and guide and direct and, and keep her close to your heart always as a father and as parents. I think we would all echo the same for all of our children. May we be united with them in your kingdom one day. May we be found faithful and our families as well. Lord, Open our hearts and minds this evening, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 16. I'm just going to read this part. It says, desire a better country. That is an heavenly we desire a better country. We live here. Canada's a great country. We're happy with it. But we certainly know things could be much better when we're living under heaven's rule. So we desire an even better place than we live now, a heavenly country where joy is everlasting. There's no sickness, sorrow, pain, death, sorrow. All those things are gone and done away with. I'm going to read a little today from Manuscript uh, 16, September 19, 1886. A little while ago. We want to seek with all the powers that God has given us to unfold the scriptures to those who are in darkness. There is happiness, hope, and peace for the desponding. We cannot afford to give our God-given ability and devote it to the commonplace things of this earth. We want a faith that will grasp the promise that is set before us in the gospel. What if we should lose our soul? It would be better for us, if we had never been born, one soul is worth more than all the gold and silver heaped up on this earth. We want to cultivate living faith in God. We can have our eyes turned away from the attractions of this world and centered upon heaven and heavenly things. We do not want the earth to intervene between us and God, but we want to be an eye single to the glory of God. We talk of heaven and its blessings, and it would be a great loss to lose it. Well then, if it is so lovely, so desirable, let's bring it into this life. Bring it into your family. Educate your children not to live for this world, but to live for the future immortal life. You can have a little heaven here below if you will only get your eyes fixed upon God, not looking at Christ half of the time and at the world the other half. When you live for God, he will put his everlasting arms beneath you. Matthew chapter 28 verse 30, just a little passage here again. Matthew 28 verse 30, Jesus speaking says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, we sometimes try to carry our own burdens and our own problems, and we might lose a little bit of that heavenly feeling that we can already have right now when we are serving and allowing God to lead. He pleads with us to let him help us carry our burden, take his yoke upon us, because it's light. Do you believe that? If you believe that, start practicing it. Start giving the problems and concerns you have to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm going to surrender this to you. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. Because you're the king of the universe and you have told me that you can take care of me and that if I take your yoke upon me, 
my burden will be much lighter. We want to be fitting that we may have an abundant entrance into the city of God. Everything compared with this is of no consequence. Some of you may have read the little quote I found and I put on my Facebook, uh, on our church Facebook page, and it said, I would rather live for Jesus and be judged by this world than live for this world and be judged by Jesus. Now, while that's a good statement, it's a little unperfect because everyone is going to be judged by Jesus. Um, and so I don't want you to think that you're going to somehow escape judgment. Judgment is a good thing. If I go to court and I know I'm innocent, I like be having a judgment placed upon me because it will be a judgment that I am innocent. The only way that is possible is if you and I are living for Jesus, if we are living with heaven in our hearts and on our minds all of the time right now, then I can be confident in that great judgment that when Jesus, when the Father looks at my name, when he looks at my record, he sees the perfect life of Christ because I am perfectly hid in him. Let's pray this evening that God will keep us hid in his life, that he will cover us with his cloak of righteousness, with his robe of righteousness, that when the Father is looking for each one of us, he sees the character of Jesus living in us and through us. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, I want to thank you once again for this little time together. Lord, we ask now that as we enter into this time of camp meeting for the next week, that we will Learn more that the speakers will be empowered by your throne of grace to give messages that we need to hear. Lord, bless us each one now and just keep us together as a family unit and as a church family so that we may be reunited one day on the sea of glass. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks. I have decided I is no point in me stopping posting these little short devotionals each day through camp meeting. You can watch them whenever you like. I don't think it takes away from camp meeting. And if you choose not to, that's okay too. But my wife said you should be faithful and keep on giving them. It only takes a few moments and there may be one person, even just one, who really is encouraged. So I said, praise the Lord. We're going to continue. It's good to listen to your spouse. Another lesson for the evening. Blessings. And have a wonderful Sabbath. I will give you another post tomorrow evening around the same time and all through Camp Meeting Week as well. Have a wonderful Sabbath and I hope to see you at, at the church tomorrow. Um, I plan to be there uh, even though I have some other Camp Meeting duties. I believe that I will be there for the worship hour. Thank you and have a wonderful evening.